everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland. Today I'm here to bring you a tag that I've really enjoyed seeing going around and that's uh, there are 10 but book tag. I'll leave the name of the creator down below and I was kindly tagged by Valerie from Thornfield Books who has such a great channel and if you haven't subscribed to her yet I'd highly recommend that you check her out. There are six questions for this tag. For each question just to mix things up a bit I said that I would pick uh, one classic and one contemporary book where possible. There are some questions I had to modify them a little bit to allow me to do this but uh, yeah just a little bit of a twist on it I suppose. So the first question is there are 10 but they're over 500 pages long and um, so this definitely isn't a problem for me with the right book and um, some books would definitely uh, are too long um, I read one just this month Historian by Elizabeth Costova and that just dragged on forever and I've just felt cheated of my time at the end um, but some books definitely uh, the longer is better and some of my favourite books are long books. I tried to pick books I don't talk about an awful lot otherwise I would probably have had to pick Bleak House for this because I do love that book um, but the classic I said I'd go with it for this is War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy um, obviously a very long book this book uh, this edition actually isn't too long because the text is absolutely tiny um, but with the epilogues it is 958 pages I think most editions are about 1200 pages I really really enjoyed this book on the whole I did feel a little bit exhausted at the end you know I, I still think it was worth it there's very few bits of this book that I felt didn't like add to the book even the even the battle sequences I suppose it just kind of contrasted so well with the peace sequences and uh, yeah just gave the background to the characters I suppose you knew what they'd been doing when they came back so War and Peace for Emily really doesn't know it's set uh, during the Napoleon Napoleonic Wars kind of in the war near Russia. It's very much kind of like a family saga I suppose that you follow loads of different characters and their relationships with each other from different families, loads of different points of view. I have heard that the amount of characters in this book puts a lot of people off. I believe me I have an awful difficulty with loads of characters or remembering character names and I actually didn't find that a problem at War and Peace weirdly whereas I would with a lot of other shorter books just you got so invested in the characters um you did have like your favorite families that you rooted for there is a lot of French in the book which is something else that puts people off um but in this edition it's actually translated I'm not sure if I'd recommend this or not oh by the way this is the Aylmer and Maud translation uh, which I found very very readable the one thing I didn't like about this edition is I think like the names were kind of anglicized a lot there's one character whose name is Andre and um, Prince Prince Andre but his it was anglicized to like Prince Andrew here which you know I I actually when I was reading it to myself I I used the Russian form um just because I suppose it felt like a more authentic experience but yeah no that's War and Peace definitely a book that I would come back to albeit uh, you know not in a hurry because it's so long but uh, it did stick with me. The contemporary book I'm going to talk about for this is The Terror by Dan Simmons. I realise that I have mentioned this a few times before but it was just such a such a good book and I really I, it's definitely my favourite contemporary long book albeit there's like some other really good ones I've read this is the one that I loved most and even because of its length it's just I suppose because you're following such a select set of characters um, in quite isolated circumstances you get so invested in them. This book is about the Franklin expedition to try and uh, find the Northwest Passage um, which is kind of in the 1840s. The expedition consisted of two ships the Terror and the Erebus um, the terror like that that's the name of the ship but there also is like a supernatural element to this book which was just thrilling and um, like I think I have seen it classed as a horror book it was just the right amount of horror for me like I could handle it there is kind of like a, a monster element to this book but there's also if you do know the history of the expedition there's that horror element as well which I actually found really more horrific but uh, I just it was such I couldn't put it down I was up until like three in the morning reading just because I could not leave these characters alone I actually went into this book uh, without knowing the history of the expedition I don't know whether that's better it led to a better or worse reading experience um, it was just it was just amazing and the end like the end was so worth it at uh, the whole book so yeah I, I, I actually another long book I've read this month like 
the book was good, but I felt, I don't know, the end was just a bit underwhelming. So not the experience, all of the terror, definitely worth it and would recommend. I, I know there's a television series, I just watched like trailers for it and I watched the first episode and um, in the first episode Lady Silence talked and I'm like, that's why she's called Lady Silence. The point is they can't communicate with her. Even if you have seen the television series, I'd recommend reading the book because they do seem to be quite different. So the second prompt is there are 10, but they're on pre-order. Obviously it's only possible to give actual pre-orders for contemporary book and of course for this I had to pick The Secrets of Hartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden. I don't pre-order a lot of books and it's something I should do more often. I pre-ordered Natasha Pulley's uh, book last year and I just found it such a fun experience waiting for it to arrive but um, yeah obviously a lot of booktube is, is waiting uh, is waiting eagerly for Katie's book which I think is going to be published in March. Uh, it's historical fiction. It's about a young widow that goes to this isolated mansion to be governess to a child um, and the kind of secrets she finds there it just sounds fascinating set in the Victorian period and obviously Katie is familiar with that period so I'd say she'll write it really well so I'm really looking forward to that novel classic obviously I've done on pre-order because they're all written some time ago and the authors are mostly dead but I've chosen to interpret this as a classic that's on my TBR and not like say the October TBR that I'll read it immediately but uh, on my more longer term TBR maybe that I'll read it kind of about March and so when I was thinking of that I was thinking of the Irish Readathon in March and in people's TBRs for October I've been hearing a huge amount about Jay Sheridan Le Fanu and I've not read any of his books so the book I'm going to pick for this is Uncle Silas which I believe it's kind of a sensation novel a locked room mystery very cautious glances in some ways it looks like it's about this girl and her and her uncle is kind of estranged he's the uncle silas of the title so um yeah just really looking forward to see if i like jay sheridan le fanu because um yeah it should be nice to cover uh, an irish victorian author question three then is they're a 10 but they're a red flag so many classics are red flags i suppose every classic could nearly appear on this list but the classic i've decided to go for is Villette by charlotte bronte i really really love this book and uh one of the things i love most about it is the romance and like the second half of the book and I, like what is wrong with charlotte bronte she writes these great romances with just really strained male protagonists i i, I don't want to give away any spoilers but the the male the male love interest in this he just things that are just strange and intrusive and like Lucy the female protagonist doesn't mind and he's doing them <laughs> what's the worst is like he's doing them there's no harm in him as we'd say like he's not doing them for malicious purposes but it's just a bit strange and I definitely wouldn't tolerate it <laughs> but um yeah he just he is a bit of a red flag even the the way he talks to her and things and he tries to put manners on her and but she doesn't mind, like, but that's just Lucy. But he is a bit of a red flag, even though I still do love that romance <laughs> and the book as a whole. I would cautiously say at the moment it's at the top of my, it's at the top of my Bronte ranking. But um, I need to reread Shirley and Jane Eyre before I decide that. But yeah, highly recommend Villette if you haven't read it yet. A running theme in this video, there is a lot of French in it. That doesn't bother me because there is a translation and I have I have a little bit of French from school. So I actually enjoyed kind of trying to trying to translate the French for myself. So um, yeah, Villette, that's a great book. So the contemporary I've picked for this, it's not so much that the characters are a red flag. It's more that they like uh, they, they, it's slightly problematic, but I still loved it so much. And it was one of my highlights of the year. Um, it's Circle of Friends by Maeve Binchy. Um, it was the first Maeve Binchy I read and it was just so so brilliant. It principally focuses on these two friends called Benny and Eve. Eve is from kind of uh, she was raised in a convent and um, she's kind of estranged from her family and she doesn't have much money. And Benny is from a family that like own a shop and they're a bit more affluent and they both go to Dublin to work or to go to college. Yeah just the adventures they get up there and how they adjust to it. The red flag bit of this is the problematic element is Benny is obsessed with her weight and she is such a bad relationship with food. I'd have to give a very strong warning about that if to anybody who's considering reading this book. If it's not something you think you'll have a problem with I would highly highly recommend this book. I had such a good time reading it and uh, yeah can't wait to read more Maeve Finchy. I was slightly let down by the other Maeve Finchy I read this month um, but yeah I, I, I'm definitely willing to give her loads more goals because I enjoyed this one so so much and it was yeah a highlight of the year as I said. So the next prompt is there are 10 but they're over 100 years old. Obviously it Again, this isn't a problem for me. I could pick many, many classics. I could pick any Jane Austen. I could pick any Bronte. I decided to go for the classic that I probably reread the most times. Um, Persuasion is probably catching up, but I'd say 
the classic that I've read the most times is Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. Um, this is a childhood favourite of mine. I actually didn't know that there was any more books in the Anne of Green Gables series. I thought there was just this one. So I just read it again and again from the library. And finally, about four or five years ago, I bought the complete set. And actually, though, embarrassing to admit, I haven't made it past book five because I just love the earlier books so much. Whenever I want to read an Anne book, I always just go back to the start and read books one to three. But anyways, I just love this book. Anne is such a timeless character. She's got such lovely kind of personality quirks. She likes to read and write stories. Her imagination gets the better of her. It's just such a good book. And of course, I also have a very soft spot for the made for TV films. I didn't really like Anne with an E so much. I feel like they changed quite a lot of things, but the made for TV films with um, Megan Follows, so good. And I'd recommend those if you haven't caught them yet. This one had to be changed a little bit to uh, accommodate a contemporary book. I decided to go with a book that was set over 100 years ago. I read a lot of historical fiction. I could recommend many things. But the one I decided to go for was kind of a new discovery for me and a time period that I don't read an awful lot, though I'd say I will read more in the future. And that's uh, Dissolution by C.J. Sansom. It's the first book in the Shard Lake series and I loved it so much. Matthew Shard Lake and his apprentice are kind of sent by... Cromwell and that was so interesting in itself because the portrayal of Cromwell was so different than it was in the Hilary Mantel books. They're sent to this monastery during the dissolution of the monasteries and while they're there murders actually start happening so he takes up kind of an investigative role and it kind of captures the feelings of the monks as their world is kind of ending. Charlie himself is such a great character. He has a hunchback, so he's kind of ostracised a little bit in the way he thinks about himself and the way people react to him. Um, and his uh, companion, I can't think of his name right now, Mark. <laughs> and Mark also is a really good sidekick. So um, yeah, it was just a brilliant book. And I haven't read the rest of the series yet, but I definitely will be. I'm kind of waiting to pick them up second hand or something. That was badly done of me, but I actually realised I decided to pick two books for this prompt when I looked at the Florida beside me there were still books on it but um yeah so I also said kind of as the opposite a book that is a new release and for this one um I read a good few good new, new releases this year but the one I said I'd pick would be potentially it would be up there again with my favourite books of the year and that's A Half-Life of Valerie Kay by Natasha Pulley. Um, as anybody that's been to this channel knows I really enjoy Natasha Pulley's books and I really enjoyed how different this one was. It's set in 1963 in Soviet Russia. It follows this uh, nuclear specialist who gets taken out of the gulag because his expertise is needed in this research facility. Um, it's about the people he meets there, in particular uh, a KGB agent. Um, it just had Natasha Pulley's wonderful wonderful writing and just the way she describes things again I've gone on about in detail in other videos but I just love the way she writes and um, so yeah that was a really good new release from this year. The next prompt is there are 10 but they were studied at school so we wouldn't have studied a huge amount of books in school and um, the education system in Ireland um, we study a lot of subjects and um, so for leaving search which is our like final school exams we do well my, I did anyways eight subjects um, whereas I think other countries you might do a few less so um, for leaving search we don't even studied two novels I think and like one play and some poetry um, but the novel that we studied was Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I did enjoy reading this in school but my enjoyment of it has much increased the more I reread it especially coming to it having read other classics I can appreciate it a lot more. Wuthering Heights is obviously a Victorian novel it's about this man called Lockwood who moves out the country he meets his new landlord who's called Heathcliff and kind of finds Heathcliff's backstory. You forget that you're hearing it through Lockwood's perspective Do you know you feel immersed in the past story as well and then sometimes you get pulled back and yeah it's just a brilliant book it was the first Bronte novel I read followed by uh followed by Jane Eyre and others so yeah it was great as a gateway into the Brontes and I did enjoy it um for a contemporary novel because we didn't pub it we didn't study any really contemporary novels it was probably is quite a common experience in schools I decided to take a little bit of a different take on it. My degree was in uh, microbiology so I decided to pick a book about microbiology and uh, that book is Paralysed with Fear, the sort of story of polio. Um, this book that probably says a lot about me because although I did like science during my degree whenever we got any snippet of like the history of science or like social history um, I was very very interested in that. Um, so this book, I've only read it once, but I, I'm not sure if I'd really call it popular science. I, I think it probably is more leaning more towards the academic side. Although there are reviews from like BBC History magazine and The Guardian and The Times on the back 
but um it does there are parts of it that are like very scientific but it's just fascinating i suppose as somebody that doesn't remember polio maybe some older people would but as a disease that used to have a huge impact on people's lives years ago and still hasn't been completely eradicated it uh it was just fascinating to read about that just to learn about the iron lungs and things and um the vaccines developed and the kind of the, the, the decisions that were made around that so uh, yeah if you are interested in the history of science um, I'd highly recommend this. He has the same kind of book on uh, smallpox which I think was published first but I actually enjoyed this one more. Still both really really good science books. I know you don't hear about science books on my channel a lot ironically anyways. So I'm sure that lighting changes were spectacular in this video. I, I filmed the rest during my lunch break. I admire the people that can film an entire video on their lunch break. I had to go off to a meeting. But anyways, the fifth and final question is there are 10 but they leave you with emotional damage. Um, so the classic I picked for this, it's the second appearance in this video but it really it's the classic that I think I was like most emotionally damaged after and that's Valette again by Charlotte Bronte. Um, I really can't spoil the ending of this book but like I mean what kind of ending is that? Like, yeah, I, it was terrible. Like, I, I, I told my mum afterwards who doesn't read it all, so I wasn't afraid of spoiling on her. Like, oh, would you believe happened in this book? And it was, it, it was actually a reread the last time I'd read this book, and I think I was. I was more attached to the characters this time. I, I react really well to rereads of classics, but I was more attached to them. You know, I didn't have to get to grips with the story as much, so I was more swept away by it. And then at the end, I knew it was coming, and I was still like, oh, what is that? <laughs> but um, yeah, it is. It, it, it definitely makes Valette unique. Poor Valette. <laughs> And the contemporary I'm going to pick for this book, um, I could have said The Kingdom, so that was kind of like happy emotional damage, sad emotional damage definitely is this book, uh, Marcia's Take by Danielle Wiles. It's a new release this year. I picked it up in Cornwall in February and I read it while I was over there because obviously I'd gone to see some mines in Cornwall and this is about mining, even though it's about coal mining, not copper mining, and it's in like the 1870s way more up north but um yeah this book it was stunning it's such a short little book it's a debut i haven't heard anybody else talk about it but i really recommend it if you're interested in like industrialization if you like like north and south but maybe want something even grittier it's about this coal miner and he actually works two jobs down in the mines to try and put his son through school so that he won't have to be a coal miner and try and break that circle of poverty and the real story is about one day he and his mining partner are working away and they find a seam of gold and like just what happens after that and it's just yeah it's just so vivid the lives of the coal miners and just the poverty and the harsh conditions they worked in and yeah it's just it was an amazing book and um yeah really did leave me emotional damage it's only 198 pages long it was so lasting some of the events at a point of the book are actually um based on real history definitely don't read the author's note beforehand but um yeah it was just it was amazing. It has a blurb from Hilary Mantel in the back if that's worth anything so um, yeah and just a, a really a really evocative cover as well. So yeah that was a great book that left me with emotional damage. So that's it that's the there are 10 but tag i really enjoyed this one i will leave the channels of some other people i tagged down below no pressure but uh, it is quite a fun tag to do so um yeah thanks for listening thanks for watching and i'll see you next thursday for my next video